Welcome back! We have most of the ingredients we need for the spells. The only thing we're missing is a uh, smooth stone. But most importantly, the spell that I said was most likely to help us get rid of the wizard was the one that turned uh, someone into a cat forever. We have all the ingredients for that, except for the cat hair. Well, fortunately, Mananan has a cat, so that should not be an issue. So, if we can prepare that spell, we should be able to uh, get rid of the wizard when he wakes up. And that will make our life a whole lot easier. And I still haven't fallen down on this path. It's rather amazing. We're just going to do as many spells as we can. Uh, first we're going to need the cat, though. Uh, the despicable cat slips away from your grasp with a fierce scratch to your arm. Which is a bit annoying. Nimbly, you grab the nasty, ca nasty cat by the scruff of its neck, avoiding its needle-sharp claws. Now that you have it, what are you going to do with it? Wow! <laughs> you manage to pluck some fur before, the viciously, before he viciously scratches and leaps from your arms. With grim satisfaction, you survey your wounds. Stupid cat, you scoff. Whether you know it or not, you just helped me. The detestable cat leaps from your arms, snarling and screeching. I don't think you can actually use the cat hair for the language of creatures spell. Okay, uh, we have either 7 or 12 minutes until the wizard wakes up. So let's get cracking on some of the spells. Of course we need to get the uh, magic wand again. And go back downstairs. Now we can do all the spells except for teleportation at random because we don't have the smooth rounded stone. Push the large book aside. Uh, pull the lever. A trap door opens. Indeed it does. And somehow the cat is down here now, probably to try and take revenge. But it will not succeed. And I will get by there without falling down and dying. Alright, let's do some magic, which uh, means that I need to go back to the manual. For instructions. Okay, let's do understanding the language of creatures, which is on. Oh, sorry. Which is on page two. Okay, turn to page two. Oh, um, sorry. Turn to page two. You have to do it in Latin numbers. With trembling hands, you turn the pages of the Sorcery of Old and prepare to follow its instructions precisely. You know you must work with utmost care. Every step is critical. Each must be done in the proper way, in the proper sequence. You tremble in anticipation. Mysterious music fills the laboratory. Oh, that's actually there? Sort of impressive. I don't hear anything. Oh, I turned the sound off. Oh, I guess that's why it said that. Because the sound was off, to let you know. I accidentally pressed F2 earlier. Good thing I saw that now. I guess that was a provision for people who don't have the sound on, so they can still know that there is mysterious music. Um, okay. Well, let's follow the instructions. Put small feather in bowl. You place a soft, downy chicken feather in your clay mixing bowl. 
put fur in ball. Oh, uh, put... I guess you can use a cat fur, but then you'd be in trouble, I guess. Not sure if you can get more cat fur. You put a tuft of dog hair into the clay ball. Put reptile skin in ball. You put a dried snake skin in the clay ball. By the way, if you try and do anything out of order, like uh, the next instru instruction is actually to put the spoonful of uh, powdered fish bone into uh, the ball, but let's put thimble full of dew in ball. Oh, uh, put dew in ball? A strange feeling comes over you. You wonder if you could have made a mistake. Who knows? Uh-oh. What large ears you have. You're all ears now, Gwydion. So, yeah. Follow the instructions. Do it in the proper order. Okay, add spoonful of powdered fish bone. You pour a spoonful of fish bone powder into the clay bowl. Put dew in bowl. You pour a thimbleful of dew into the clay bowl. Mix with hands. You knead the ingredients in the clay bowl with your hands. It turns into a stiff, dough-like substance. Separate mixture into two pieces. You grasp the doughy mixture in the bowl and divide it into two pieces. Now this is the last step and I like saving before the last step because you cannot save after the last step and before the incantation. So this will give me the opportunity to uh, restore here if I get the incantation wrong. Okay, put dough pieces in ears. Really? Yuck. You very gently place the two pieces of dough in your ears and pull your hair down over them. You prepare to recite the magical incantation. Okay, there we go. Feather of fowl and bone of fish. Mold it together in this dish. Dish. What happened to the music? Um, give me wisdom to understand. Creatures of air, sea, and land. Wave magic wand. You wave the magic wand over your dough-filled ears. Successfully completing the spell, you again look at the wizard's laboratory. Okay, we can now understand the speech of animals as long as the dough is in our ears. Okay, next spell. Um, next one in the book is teleportation at random, but we don't have all the ingredients for that, so let's do causing a deep sleep. Um, oh, turn to page 14. With trembling hands, you turn the pages of the Sorcery of Old and prepare to follow the instructions precisely. You know you must work with the utmost care. Every step is critical. Each must be done in the proper way, in the proper sequence. You tremble in anticipation. Okay, um, save. Always a good idea. Grind acorns in mortar. Putting the dried acorns into the stone mortar, you use the pestle to grind them into a rough acorn powder. Put acorn powder in bowl. Turning the heavy stone mortar upside down, you carefully pour the acorn powder into the bowl, then return the mortar to the table. I hope you washed the bowl after the previous gel spell. Put nightshade juice in bowl. 
you very carefully pour a cupful of nightshade juice into the clay bowl so as not to spill a single drop. There is now an ugly brown mealy liquid mixture in the bowl. Stir mixture with spoon is next. Oh. Stir mixture with spoon. You gently stir the unappetizing liquid. Fortunately, it does not kill you for spelling errors during this portion. Um, light a charcoal brazier. Which is also on the table here, so that's good. Making sure there's fresh charcoal in the brazier. There's a small supply here. You light it with the flint. Soon the brazier is hot. Heat mixture on... Oh. Heat mixture on brazier. You gingerly place the, craze, the clay boil of ugly brown liquid on the charcoal brazier. Spread mixture... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the manual, not the screen. Soon the hot brazier brings the mixture to a bubble, then a boil, releasing a bitter smelling steam. You let it boil until the nightshade juice is nearly gone, then remove it from the brazier. Spread mixture on table. Wait, um, that's the last one, so I'm gonna save here. You pour the bowl's contents onto the open table, then spread the hot, sticky mixture over the tabletop. In a few minutes, it is dried into to a very crumbly, coarse sleeping powder. Okay. Acorn powder ground so fine. Nightshade juice like bitter wine. Actually, I'm gonna do this wrong. Let's show you what happens for this one. A strange feeling comes over you. You wonder if you could have made a mistake. Oops. Now we're asleep. Night night, Quidian. Okay, not a good thing then. Spread mixture on table. Acorn powder ground... Ground so fine. Nightshade juice like bitter wine. Silently in darkness you creep. To bring a soporific sleep. Wave the magic wand. You pass the magic wand over the table. And put sleep powder in pouch. You untie the small leather pouch, scoop the powder from the table and place it within. You now have a pouch full of sleep powder. Successfully completing the spell, you again look at the wizard's laboratory. Well, we'll continue with the spells in the next video.